Okay, he's gotta be coming soon. He said he would. I just hope the interdimensional portals still work. Oh! Maybe it has worked. <sighs> there we go. My portal jumping abilities have never failed me one bit. Hmm? Oh, Campbell! I've heard about you. Thanks for showing up. You helped my friend Tony Sonic with a few everything wrong with for his Chari videos. Well, before he quit them. Is that correct? Yeah, it's been quite a while since then. So you're this elf on TV person who called me here. Yes, there was a Sonic video I wanted to do, which I tried to get Tony Sonic to do, but he was busy with Kingdom Hearts. So you were the only one I thought to go to. Um, if you're up to it, of course. Yeah, I'm down for it. Great. Time we get started on Sonic Prime. And oy vey, I got a bone to pick with this show. Not the show itself, by the way. Ah, I see. Well, that should be a good start for my first show-related countdown. At any rate, let's begin, shall we? Right behind ya. Hello there, I'm Elephant TV. And I'm User One Campbell. And with this video, we'll be going over the Sonic show on Netflix, Sonic Prime. Campbell, care to tell us the premise of the show? Of course. Sonic Prime is a series on Netflix that started late 2022, having three seasons to it. The premise is about Sonic accidentally breaking the Paradox Prism, which created the Shadowverse. Every Shadowverse has parallel counterparts of most of the cast, and in order to return everything back to normal, Sonic must collect the shards from Prism to restore it and everything else. It started out well as its own series, until it's been confirmed that Sonic Prime is canon to the games. While some fans would be glad that a Sonic show is finally canon to the Sonic games, I, for one, as most fans, don't really like the idea of the direction. And that's mostly for a lot of reasons. Here are the top 5 reasons why Sonic Prime shouldn't and doesn't need to be canon. Number 5. There hasn't been a mainline game based on Sonic Prime yet. Given the circumstances of promising abilities Sonic has, and given Sonic a multiverse story, I wouldn't mind seeing that as a game. Except, there hasn't been any plans for one yet. This is definitely the most minuscule out of all the things we're about to talk about, as shows can be canon to the chronological timeline, such as Devil May Cry the Animated Series, which takes place in between the events of Devil May Cry 1 and 2. Shows like Sonic Boom were already part of the Boom universe, but that was part of its own universe. Sonic Prime, on the other hand, wants to take the game's approach, which would be great, but if this is like making the IDW comics canon, when Sega could have easily just made games that have aspects of both medias without any contradictions, but we're not at that part yet. Since this is more of a minor part, we left this low on the list of reasons, as the next four will have much more in-depth explanations. And yeah, there is Sonic Prime Dash, but... Who honestly remembers that one? I sure as hell didn't. Did you help on? I might have, but it was more of a side game than a spin-off like Sonic Rush or any mainline Sonic game. You can still do that game, Sega. We're waiting. Waiting. And waiting. And waiting. And waiting. And wait! <laughs> Number 4. Too much action. Now, I know what you're thinking. Mate, you're overthinking it. Sonic has always had action in them. What are you talking about? Let me explain. Basically, as much as I love a bit of the battle choreography and the camera shots, the show never gives the time to breathe when it needs to. Like for example, you don't see Sonic characters fighting all the time. We see scenes of the characters doing other stuff to show what they do outside of fighting Eggman. And given this reason, considering Sonic Prime is an action series, and while too much action isn't a bad thing given it's, well, an action series, Ladoy, Sonic games, while not all the time it does this, gives time for the audience to stop and breathe for a while. Sonic Prime does have their moments in the series, and the fight scenes are amazing as all hell. However, several of their moments will be spent in episodes that don't give their audience time to at least stop. Hello, Sonic Prime Season 3, how are you on this fine day? I know these seasons come out short. I mean, seriously, why do so many TV shows have to be so needlessly short? You can still have moments of break from the action, and still be a fun thrill to watch. An anime route of having 12 episodes per season would be nice. Or bring back the traditional 26 episodes each season, like how normal cartoons do. That too would also be nice. With more episodes in each season, 
you can give proper answers to some questions, like how does Shadow know what the Paradox Prism is, or where the rest of the Chaos Emeralds are at. Speaking of... Number 3. Contradictions to the games. Even in a lot of what we talked about thus far, this is probably one of the better entries we got so far because Sonic Prime does have some contradictions to the games. This one has as if Tails' origin is how Sonic and Tails met in Sonic Origins, which is fine. But then there's how Sonic and Knuckles met, which was at the Hidden Palace, even though they met at Angel Island and Sonic was in his super form when that happened. Speaking of his super form, the Chaos Emeralds are underutilized in the show. Shadow finds the green Chaos Emerald, uses it only once, and then he loses it in what I'm thinking is an attempt to nerf him of his powers. Also, there's this part. If I still had that Chaos Emerald, I could have teleported out of here. But it's lost the void. You can teleport without the Chaos Emerald, Shadow. You don't really need it. Anyways, when Sonic is going through the Shadowverse, we see nothing. No Chaos Emerald of any kind. You'd think, in a serious situation like the multiverse collapsing, that the Chaos Emeralds would be needed, eh, Campbell? Yeah, it definitely would have been nice for them to be actually included in the show, but do they need to be in everything? Not really. But considering that Shadow had that one Chaos Emerald, it would somewhat give the implication that the other Chaos Emeralds would show up too. Reality is disappointing, I swear to god. What's even more silly is that Sonic could have gotten a great super form as a consolation prize, but the idea was squandered instead. While there have been better Sonic forms that were implemented in the stories better, but let's hope we get that luxury next time. Number 2. Being its own thing can separate from different depictions of Sonic. Sonic is usually cocky and jokey, but willing to take things seriously should the situation call for it. This one wants to do a flawed Sonic where his cocky attitude had caused some disastrous consequences. Separate canons do tweak how characters act without having to break too many rules. You can break some, but something shouldn't be screwed around. And in some cases, Sonic is a pushover. Like when Shadow asked why should I trust you to do anything? In the games, there's multiple reasons to trust him! Even in cases like Sonic Boom, Shadow is more of an asshole with him having more of an antagonistic personality when compared to the games. Sonic Prime doesn't do this with Shadow and instead does understand what his character is while depicting him more differently. In this, the only reason Sonic's acting like that is just to make Shadow look good. Hot-headed nature annoys the more serious one, just like in my favorite book. Some people have been saying that Shadow's in the right, which, while I agree, I don't blame Sonic for ignoring him. Shadow has shown no proof that he knows of this, and after attacking him, why should Sonic listen to him? See, this is why both of them are an elite team, Alphon. When you have two opposite characters, the oppositions work the best. And Sonic and Shadow don't work together because they are different, it's because they share the same goals. Even when the two work together, Shadow acts more like he's forced to do it, even though he and Sonic are supposed to have a mutual respect to one another. You could make the argument that Shadow doesn't have all his memories yet, but given how Sonic has taken out many enemies in the past, that shouldn't be an issue. That would be like if Luigi didn't trust Mario because of how many times Luigi was disrespected. Wait, was that a bad comparison? Eh. Given the context of a comparison, I wouldn't exactly say it's a bad one, though visualizing Luigi as an edgelord is somehow the weirdest thing in my brain today. Wait, what? Number 1. Prime Sonic and Shadow barely act like their game counterparts. Sonic Prime had definitely made changes to the brand, but definitely the most interesting thing that caught our eye the most is how much both Sonic and Shadow in Sonic Prime acts differently in comparison to how they are in the games. We'll start off with Sonic first. For one example, Sonic is usually powerful, but now he's practically nerfed. We went from this... ...to this. The only way you're taking my tech is over my dead- Hey bro, miss me. Him being nerfed is one thing, but another is how he... ...well... In Sonic Prime, apparently Sonic has taken his friends for granted and somehow doesn't value them? Which makes no sense because Sonic does value his friends. Why do you think we had Sonic have multiple playable characters in the Sonic games from Sonic Adventure to the Black Knight? 
Especially since during Prime, Sonic would eventually realize how his rash decisions would cause catastrophic events. In the adventure games and heroes, he would have at least kept a level head when it comes to making his choices. Given how Prime is written, I honestly don't blame anyone for believing this did not be game Sonic. As much as I would love a flawed Sonic in a show, this was kind of a mixed way of doing it. The story downplays Sonic's character to make Shadow look good, but even good characterization doesn't do much for Shadow, since after they make him look good, Shadow does nothing until he's supposedly allowed to do good stuff again. Do we think Sonic is outright bad in this show? No, because even if the character development feels out of place in the canon universe, I'm all for a more rash version of Sonic, and they do keep his trademark personality intact most times. Like, Sonic is still the cocky jokester we know him as, and makes him sometimes more jokey than normal like in Colors, and yet, he's still willing to take things seriously when the situation gets dire. The thing I hate about his character, not from the show, is that everyone constantly sides with Shadow 100% and not taking Sonic's side of things. As much as I agree that Shadow has every right to be mad at Sonic for causing the Paradox Prism to be shattered, consequently ended up causing Green Hell in the process to fade and crack due to the place being the epicenter of this entire ordeal, some of the ways on how Shadow goes about this is taking things a bit too far. With Shadow not only distrusting Sonic, but also fighting him to steal the tech 9 made for Sonic so that Shadow could get the prison pieces, is honestly a bit uncalled for. Yes, Sonic and Shadow have always fought together, even in some of the most pettiest ways, and as much as the fight scene with the two at the beginning of Season 2 is awesome as f***, the reasons behind it is not because it's petty, but taking from an earlier entry on this list, it can contradict the games because of the massive distrust Shadow has towards Sonic. I love Shadow in this show. I think this was the best he had written in a long damn time, but I sadly don't agree with all of his methods. That said though, he has the right to not trust Nine and the other Shatter Space counterparts that I 100% understand with him on. And not to mention, they wrote as if Shadow can't go to the Shatter Spaces, but they also made as if Shadow doesn't care or acknowledge characters that aren't Sonic, like a certain treasure hunter that has practically become his best friend at that point. Rouge did once say, Shadow? Even if you believe everyone in the world will be against you, know that I'll always remain by your side. Remember that. I will. I don't care if it wasn't a game that never happened, it still makes as if Shadow and Rouge have become close. Instead of saying, your friends, they should have said, they're not our real friends, just to make it as if Shadow still acknowledges them. Actually, wait, something that just popped into my mind. Yes? Shadow barely acknowledges Rouge and Prime at all. You're right. If you wanted Rouge to show up in Tails' workshop, why not have as if Shadow shows up after Rouge leaves, and Shadow only says, You best be careful with the Paradox Prism. Even I don't know what the Prism does. If Eggman gets that Prism, or if something happens to it, there's going to be dire consequences. And another instance of Shadow should be acknowledging Rouge is where in Season 2, Shadow vows to the talking Rouge head that he'll find the one responsible for this. Heck, if they also want to go the extra mile with the Shadow and Rouge concept, in Season 3, they could have had Shadow and Rebel constantly interact with one another. It would give some character development towards Shadow, making him fully realize firsthand as to why Sonic trusted Nine. If this happens for Sonic and Shadow, it would surpass the 7 out of 10 I gave it. So that's the end. These were our 5 reasons why Sonic Prime shouldn't and doesn't need to be canon. To summarize our thoughts, I'd say it's alright at best and could have been better at worst. I may have said this before, but it'll bear repeating. From Sonic's perspective, Shadow attacked him, catching him off guard, and gave him no context to what was going on. All Shadow had to do was just catch up and talk to him like that without needing to fight him. And no, the first two times Shadow tried to talk to him doesn't count. And even when Shadow does tell Sonic about info of the Paradox Prism, we still don't know how Shadow even knows what the Paradox Prism is. When it comes to comments about Sonic and Shadow, they just want to pick one side without taking the other side into account. If they just wrote the show as if they both did stupid stuff that caused the Paradox Prism to be in a static route, and especially after what happened in Season 2, it would make the show less one-sided 
and would make the show better than a 7 out of 10 for me. What about you, Campbell? You know, despite a lot of what was said all throughout this countdown, I still love Sonic Prime so much. While there are some faults here and there between both Sonic and Shadow stated previously in this video, I still think they have some of the best modernized characterizations of both characters, with Sonic still having his serious moments when the task calls for it, and Shadow not being an outright edgelord but for the most part tries to keep a level head. I love the ideas that this show goes for, and honestly, for the most part, the concepts are played very well. Just not all of them. The fact that this show takes place after Sonic Advance 3, while I get it is confusing a bit since Sonic acts more childish in this than in the early 2000s iterations of his character, and Shadow, while a lot of his anger towards Sonic is justified in a sense, the fact that he didn't trust him in order to fix the Paradox Prism is weird to me since Shadow and Sonic have assisted each other in Sonic Adventure 2 and especially in Sonic Heroes. And yet Shadow doesn't want to be here? Just doesn't make sense. It is a bit confusing, yeah. While Prime isn't my favorite Sonic show, it's definitely my third favorite behind Sonic X and Sonic Boom. I know that this show has been confirmed to be canon, but in both me and Elfon's eyes, it's, it's not. not. A lot of what is in the show would make somewhat more sense as a separate canon to the Sonic first, and I wouldn't mind it if Sega and Sonic Team decided to make references to Prime in future mainline installments. But as stated, we're believing it to be a separate canon, but Sonic Prime as a whole as stated before I still believe is a really good show. While I still like the show too, if they're going to change the characters to fit the story they want to tell, they shouldn't have made it canon, especially when you realize Ian Flynn pointed out the contradictions, and yet the writers didn't listen to it. And that's really sad to be honest, because if a writer points out contradictions, what do you do? Just forget about it and grab a bite at your nearest Wendy's? <laughs> no! Listen to the writer and find out ways on how to fix these contradictions. Oh boy, and now score. Alright, alright. Uh, Sonic Prime to me is an 8 out of 10. Anyways, thanks for watching our top 5 video. Be sure to check out user one Campbell's channel, and be sure to subscribe to both our channels. And that's the end of it all. Whew. That was quite the wild ride. But I will say, talking about Sonic Prime has been quite the adventure. Thanks for bringing me along to this, Elfon. No problem, mate. I hope to work with you on another project. Me too. I look forward to the time we see each other again. Sayonara, Elfon TV. Chaos Control! Well, that's that done. Now what could I do next?